morning, Soma City. Ah, yes. And all the friends who are here, if you were invited by somebody, welcome to Soma City. Thanks for checking us out. Thanks for being with us. Wherever you are on your spiritual journey, you are welcome in this space. We're really glad to be here. My name's Amy, and I'm really excited to spend this morning with you guys. All right, I got a question for you. Have you ever had that friend that just gets you? You know what I'm saying? Like, you're on the same wavelength. You laugh at the same things. You finish each other's, thank you, thank you, sandwiches, um, right? Like, if you're, if you're next to each other in a social situation, if something's funny, like, watch out. You will, you will start laughing, and you will not stop. Or, let's say, this is my friend Katie when I was growing up. So she and I, we were on the same, like, it's like we shared a brain, and we could not be trusted to be together in social situations, like, especially Spanish class, we had to be on the opposite side. It didn't matter, though. We would see each other and have that moment, and we just start laughing. I'm like, oh, right? That friend. But also, she was that friend that when things got hard and they were sad and I was in the dark, she would climb down into that space with me and sit next to me and just say, it is hard. It is hard. She wouldn't flip the lights on too fast. She would let her eyes adjust to the darkness. And just sit and comfort me and be there with me. Right? That's she was she was that kind of friend. I don't I don't know if, if you have that friend in your life right now, and it's good, and you just it's the best to have that friend. Or if you have you have had that friend in the past, but man, something shifted, something changed in that relationship, and you're missing that friend. Maybe they've moved away. Friends, I've had so many people move away who are dear and and you miss them. What if I told you that the Holy Spirit is the best friend you could ever have? But right? But you didn't you didn't know you could have that friend. What if I what if I said that? What if I said the, the Holy Spirit is the best friend? Now, I realize in a room this size with the lived experiences in this space, when I say the words Holy Spirit, we're going to have a variety of, of thoughts that, you know, concepts and pictures and images and experiences that pop into our head, depending on your background and, and what you got. So I want to I tell you about when, when I was little, this was my concept of the Holy Spirit. So I went to church um, on and off growing up, and the church that I was in, there was this purple flag that hung on the wall that had a white bird on it and a green twig in its mouth. And to me, in my little eight-year-old mind, I felt like, oh, that the Holy Spirit look, feels like God's mascot for his team. You know what I'm saying? Like, like Cincinnati has its Bengals, right? Go Bengals, is that? Detroit has its Lions. <laughs> I never know what I'm going to get. First service was like Bengals. And, and Team God has its doves, which is not fierce when it comes to football, you know what I'm saying, but this was my little brain, like I felt like if you join Team God, you get a purple jersey, you get a helmet with a dove on the side, and like they give you twigs, stickers for like every good thing that you, I'm just telling you what I'm thinking, can I, is that okay, that, that, that was my, now for you, some of you guys, I wonder if, if you have some pictures or some images of the Holy Spirit in, in your brain, right, maybe some of you guys, the Holy Spirit feels like a feeling, like those like chills that run up your spine when you get a good story or someone tells you something. The Spirit feels like a feeling. Or maybe the Holy Spirit feels like a genie, and you're really hoping you get three wishes granted in your life, especially when it counts. You're like, man, I just am really a, a genie there. Or, or maybe the Spirit is with the cast and characters of, like, people who float, like Yoda the tooth fairy, Holy Spirit. I just, you know what I'm saying? Like, just kind of, I was talking to somebody in the bathroom, maybe between services. She's like, yeah, I felt like he could see full. I don't know what, what comes into your mind, but this is what I know. If the Spirit of God were to walk in the back door and, and, and come sit in church today, we would all want to go and get his number and invite him to lunch because he's that mag magnetic and he's that dynamic. We would want to see what he was up to on Friday night. We'd be like, you, you want to hang? Like, are you, is that, 
tacos, queso, can we do that? Like you would want to kick it with the Spirit of God. You really would. He is the best friend we have always wanted. Maybe we never thought we could have. Like if, if things go really well, you'd want to call him up and be like, guess what? I just got a promotion. And if, if, if stuff hit the fan, you like that version, um, you, you would want to call him and say, like, I don't know what to do next. Like, can you help me? And you, you would want to be with him. So here's the deal. What, is it, what does it even mean that he's our best friend? We're going to talk about that this morning. What does it mean to live life with him? And so here's my prayer for every single one of us in this room this morning, friends. Some of you have been around church and, and the Holy Spirit for a long time. You're like, I got it. I am praying that you would walk away with a deeper awareness of the Spirit of God. Would you be willing to have open hands about, about him today? Yes. And if you are new to the Spirit, or you're new to God, you're new to church, you're like, I don't even know how I got in this space right now. I'm praying for you this morning, too, that you would also be open-handed to hear about who the Spirit is. So three thoughts today on the Spirit. Thought one, the Holy Spirit is a person. And I have a dot, 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 because I'm going to add to that point. We're just going to stop here for a second. The Holy Spirit is a person with a capital P. He's a person. The Holy Spirit is, is not an it, and he's not a feeling. Though, let me say this. Don't our friends evoke feelings inside of us? Right? When a friend tells you, hey, you did a great job on that. You feel encouraged. You feel emboldened. You feel confident. You're like, okay, I can do this. But that feeling came from what that friend said to you. Right? There's, there's you know, if... The feel, if, if somebody calls you out, if a friend calls you out, it's like, hey, you might feel thankful or annoyed, depending on the day. But that friend evoked a feeling, and that's, that's what the Spirit of God, that's what, who he is. I just want to hear, I want you guys to hear this. The Holy Spirit is a person who can inspire a lot of feelings, but he's not a feeling who inspires people. That's, you picking up on that? Yeah, I just, we're going to fill out our, what we think about the Spirit of God here. And just to be clear, when you see the fruit of the Spirit, things like peace, joy, those are feelings. He loves to provide those things in our lives. This is who he is. So the Spirit of God is a person, capital P, meaning he is the third person of the Holy Trinity, which is so mysterious, friends. I mean, the fact that we have three in one, that we have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Each of them 100% God, but all in this community together, giving and receiving love between one another. And they're communicating, and they, they have different jobs and roles and things that they do. And they're so, so sustained by their love for one another, they don't need humans, but God has invited us into relationship with them and their love. It's so sweet and so gracious. He's a person. All right, so how do we even know any of, like, how do we know he's a person? We're going to look at what Jesus taught us about the Spirit of God this morning. So if you have a Bible, and I am so encouraged that people are bringing physical Bibles, how fun are you? If you've got, a, you've got an actual Bible, listen, though, no shame. I love a good Bible on the phone. Like, it's a good time. If you need a Bible at the Connect counter, grab one afterward. We, we'd love to get them. But turn in your Bible to John chapter 13. Um, New Testament, last third of your Bible. And as you're getting there, just a little context about when Jesus is going to talk about the Holy Spirit here. For chapters 13 through 17 in John, this is so interesting. We get five whole chapters of Jesus having one conversation with his best friends. That's what this is. He's having a conversation with his best friends the night before he dies. It's, it's rich, but that's five chapters. We're going to start at the beginning of chapter 13 right here, and it's going to be on the screen. He's, he's having dinner with his 12 disciples, his 12 best friends. And you guys, these guys have traveled three years together, and they are tight beats, these guys. They have seen a lot. They have... They have seen miracles. Jesus has healed their family members. Peter's wife, her mom was sick. He came and healed Peter's mother-in-law. They have seen a lot. They've traveled together. And now they're having, 
they're having the Passover feast together. And this is, this is where we're starting right here. John chapter 13, verse 1. And here, just listen, Soma City, we've done this before. When we hit the underlined words, you know what to do. We're going to read those together. You game for that? Okay. It's liturgical and communal. Okay, here we go. It was just before the, the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come him to leave and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them. Are you noticing this? He's going to leave them, and this is the end. This is concerning. Now, he, he had been talking about this with the disciples for a while, but they weren't really picking up what he was putting down. Like, this, they weren't grasping a lot what was happening here. And this is what's happening. He's, he's leaving, and he's, ta- he's talking about this over dinner. I don't know if this has ever happened to you, where you go out to dinner— and you're looking forward to it. You're like, this is going to be a good time. It is Friday night. I'm going to get some apps. I'm going to get some good drinks. We're going to have some lighthearted conversations. It'll be great. And you sit with that person across from you, but then they drop a bomb. And you're like, I'm not even hungry anymore. What is this? Friends, this, I did this to a boyfriend in high school. I was like, you think we have something? We don't. Um, <laughs> This is not Jesus breaking up with his disciples, though, you guys. That's not what this is. I just want you to see the shock, the shock value. They're like, what is happening? What's going on here? Okay. He's, there, he's leaving, and it's a lot for them to process. And he's like, he's, he wants to talk about comforting them in this moment. I'm going back. I, I want to comfort you, and this is what this conversation is. Turn to your, turn your page, John 14, still in this long conversation. Go to John 14, verse 25, and he's going to talk about the spirit here. He says, I'm telling you, this is Jesus talking, I'm telling the, you these things now while I'm still with you. We're at dinner, we're talking, we're together, I'm talking about this. But when the Father, as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit, he will and will. Okay, Jesus is talking about the Spirit as a person. Do you see, the, the, the Spirit has some jobs to do. He's going to do some things. He has a will, he has a mind. There's two verbs here. He's going to do What? Teach and remind. Turn to somebody and say, he's going to teach and remind. He's going to teach and remind. Yes. Listen, and what's he going to teach and remind us? Everything that Jesus was teaching, which he's the fulfillment of the whole law. It is God's word, which is fun. The more you read God's word, the more the spirit of God is going to teach you and remind you all kinds of things. It works like that together. And friends, this is good news that the spirit of God is going to teach and remind. But I don't know about I don't know about you, but do you ever open your Bible and you read it and you're like, I have no idea what this means. Please tell me this happens to you. Yes. Friends, I'm in seminary right now and we are reading the passages that I have avoided because I don't know what they're saying. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, Spirit, you're going to have to teach and remind me right now because I, I don't get it. And then he teaches me and then I forget it. And so then he'll remind me. He teaches and reminds me. That's what he, so that's, that's our first thought that, Thought one, the Spirit is a person who teaches and reminds us of what Jesus taught. Which means, if he's a teacher, he's got things to say to us. He wants to speak to us. But I'm wondering if we have ears to hear. The other day, I was um, making dinner, chopping, cooking, doing all the things. And my oldest comes downstairs and says, hi, mom. And I said, hey. And then I start talking to him and we're chopping and he's making like a sandwich, like five minutes before dinner. That's fine. Just like the pre-dinner that teens do. And, um, <laughs> and so, and I'm, ta- and I'm talking, we're, we're having, you know, and then I ask him, what does he think? And it's nothing. I was like, and I asked him again, silence. And I'm like, rude. And I was like, Hey, Robbie. And he looks at me and he takes out each earbud. Like, he did not have ears to hear what his mama was saying. Right? And I wonder for us how often have we turned up the volume in, in volume in our lives that so loud that we have turned down the voice of God and we cannot hear what he's saying. Have we done that? The volume is so loud with distractions and screens, our own thoughts, all kinds. It's so loud. We don't take the time to say, you know what, what is God saying? He wants to teach and remind. This is why, friends, 
when suffering hits our life and pain and we finally stop because it's got, the, the suffering has gotten that loud and we stop, sometimes that's when we hear God the most in the darkest places, in the suffering, in the pain. Just a few weeks ago, I was talking to a new friend that I had met here. I love talking to you guys and meeting you guys and hearing your stories. It's, it's fantastic. She was telling me, this is several years ago now, that she found herself in a hospital room next to her daughter who was in a hospital bed in a coma, unexpectedly. And she's in that room, and they were not sure what was going to happen, if her daughter was going to make it. And this, this woman knew God and had been in her Bible, but in that moment, she felt really lost. And she, she remembers just thinking, I don't even know where to go. I don't even know where to go in my Bible, where to turn. I don't even know how to pray. Have you been there? You're in that moment. And she said, when she was thinking that in the darkness of this hospital room, God reminded her, she brought to mind a story from Luke 8 of a daughter who had been sick and had died. And then Jesus said to the parents, don't be afraid, just believe. He took her hand and raised her up and healed her. And so she turns to her Bible, goes to that story, and starts praying, God, you did that before. Would you do it? She was asking for the increase of faith that she saw in God's word. And guess what? God healed her daughter. And she's better. Yeah, yeah absolutely. She, she's living her life. But who told her to go to Luke and remind her about God? Who was that? The Spirit of God, because he does what? He teaches and reminds. That's what he does, friends. The Spirit of God wants to teach and remind you of God's faithfulness. The Spirit of God wants to teach and remind you of his goodness. The Spirit of God wants to teach and remind you of his justice. The Spirit of God wants to teach and remind you of his compassion. The Spirit of God wants to teach and remind you of his never stopping, never giving up, unbreaking, always and forever love. You know what I'm saying? That's what he wants to do. He wants to remind you of God's character, of his rule and his reign. Second thought about the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit is our helper. Anybody need help? <laughs> like just like in general Turn to somebody and say, I need help. Yeah, it's good for us. <laughs> All right, we're in John 14 in your Bible. Stay right there. We're going to stay right there, but we're going to emphasize a different part of this, this verse here. This is Jesus. He says, I'm telling you these things now while I'm still with you. But when the Father, the advocate, the advocate as my representative, he calls the Spirit the advocate. That word advocate in the original Greek right here is the word paraclete. Turn to somebody and say paraclete. I heard some parakeets. That's fine. <laughs> Keeping with the bird theme. Paraclete. A paraclete was someone who came alongside someone else and would advocate and plead for you like in a courtroom setting. That's what, that's what a paraclete would do. But, it, but actually, it's a pretty thick word. It's layered. And, and that's why you see different versions, like call the spirit advocate, or sometimes you see some other words. I, we're going to have a little fun here with the different versions in your, in your Bible here this morning, because my, mine says helper. Anybody else have helper in their Bible? Yeah, helper, depending on your version. Does anybody else have comforter? Spirit God is our comforter. Yes. Does anybody else have counselor? Yes. Look how thick that is. He's a helper, an advocate, a, a counselor, a comforter. That's so good. But I wanted to land on helper because, again, I need help. The Spirit advocates for us, helps us in our greatest places of need, in our places where there's no playbook. Anybody feel like they're living without a playbook right now? And you really, like, where did the playbook go with each of my children? 
Like, did it get lost in the, situ- in the shuffle, in the situation? <laughs> like, what happened? Where's the playbook when you're in this place in your marriage and you're like, I don't know where to go, how to fix this? Where's the playbook when you find yourself in an addiction and you're not sure how to get free and what to do? Friends, the Holy Spirit is the best friend we've ever had because he is a helper who has a playbook. And not only does he have the playbook, the Holy Spirit is the playbook. He's going to say, hey, this, go do this next. Try this. Go to this first. I'll remind you of who I am and who you are. He's the helper. One of the best gifts about being a helper in our lives is We weren't designed to do this life alone, friends. Not one part of our beautiful, adventurous, heartbreaking, complicated life is meant to be lived alone. When Jesus said, I'm leaving you, I know they felt scared, but he goes, listen, I'm not leaving you orphaned. I'm going to send the helper to help you in this life that feels complicated, where we wish we had a playbook. I'm going to leave you an advocate. Friends, whatever need you have right now, the Holy Spirit can advocate for that need. The way I have seen one of my friends advocate for the special needs of her child at school. She steps in and says, this is what he needs. Whatever weakness you have right now, the Holy Spirit can comfort you. The way a dad takes his daughter and pulls him pulls her in and says, listen, I know you feel weak. I am strong. I'm with you. I I can comfort you. Whatever addiction you have, the Holy Spirit will counsel you the way a therapist says, listen, this is the next step to take. This is who he is, the Spirit of God. Listen, the best forward prayer you can pray is this, Holy Spirit, help me. All day long. Holy Spirit, help me. And don't you dare feel like you're not allowed to pr- pr- pray that because you got yourself into that mess. Do you know what I'm talking about? You're like, I can't ask for help. I dug the hole and I climbed into the pit and I'm down here. Like, I, listen, that is a lie the enemy is selling and you're not buying it. You, he is called the helper for a reason. Help me, Holy Spirit. Pray it a lot, all the time. No shame in that game. Friends, the other day, I was at a parenting loss. I was like, I do not know what to do in this situation. And I, I was writing this sermon, and I literally was talking about this forward prayer, Holy Spirit help. And so I closed my computer, and I had a little bit of a drive, and so I was like, well, Holy Spirit, help me. I don't know what to do. I'm about to walk into my house, and I need to address this situation. I don't, I don't know. Where's the playbook? So at, I prayed that. Holy Spirit, help me. And then, right after that prayer, I had an idea. And I don't know if this happens to you. If you ask God for help with an idea, you're like, is that idea God? <laughs> or is it Amy? <laughs> like, what's happening? You know, what's Here's what's really sweet. This idea did not contradict God's word. So that's a hot tip. The Spirit of God will never tell you anything that, does, that contradicts his word. He's not going to say steal, lie, d- destroy, any of that. It's going to smell like the fruit of the Spirit, right? Love, joy, peace, patience, God. It's going to look like that. And so I thought, you know what? Amen. I am going to assume this is the Holy Spirit. I'm going to walk by faith. So I took this idea. It wasn't anything crazy, but I was just like, all right. I applied the idea, and inside my house with one of my children, I'll tell you what, you guys, it changed the entire narrative for the rest of our night. This one thing, because he's a helper. Holy Spirit, help me. Pray it all day long, guys. That's who he is. All right, point three. Last thing I want to say. The Holy Spirit lives inside of you. He lives inside of you. You're in John 14. We're going to back it up just a few verses to to verse 16 and 17. And this is Jesus. He says, 
still talking about the spirit with them. I will ask the Father, and he'll give you another advocate who will never, I, I wanted more gusto on that one, who will never leave you. Thank you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads us into all truth. The world can't receive him because it's not looking for him. It doesn't recognize him, but you know him because he lives with you now in you. He's not leaving you, and he lives inside of you. This is the spirit. If you have said yes to Jesus, if you have said, Jesus, I believe and I give you my life, at some point in your life, the spirit of God then has taken up residence inside of you and made his home inside of you. Friends, to a first century Jew, which was the disciples sitting here at dinner with Jesus, for him to say that, this would have blown their minds. Here's why. What they knew and what we see in the Old Testament is that the Spirit of God would come upon different people at different times for different tasks for different seasons, but it wasn't a permanent situation. The Spirit would come in a temporary way. And then, and then would go. In fact, fun fact, the first person to receive the Spirit, be filled by the Spirit, was an artist. Isn't that fun? Was a, was a creator, was a maker. His name was Bezalel. You can read about him in Exodus 35. And he was tasked by the Spirit of God to make beautiful things for the tabernacle that they were making so that God's Spirit would come dwell among his people in this tent, this tabernacle. And after he was done making this tabernacle, I want you to see what happens in here. And this is in Exodus 40. It says, Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting and the filled the temple, filled the tabernacle. The glory of God, his essence, his presence, his weight, his wonder moved in and camped right there in the tabernacle. But look at what it says next. And Moses was not able to enter. Listen. Because the cloud had settled on it, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Moses, God's friend, couldn't go in. Because at that time, there wasn't the final sacrifice that took our sin and separation away from God, that we could have this communion. There was this separateness going on. And later when they make, after the tabernacle, they make the temple. And there was a holy of holies spot that was divided by this four-inch thick curtain that said, we can't get that close. There is still this sin. We're looking, we're looking for the final sacrifice that takes us away. And friends, we celebrate this in a few weeks. But when Jesus died and rose again, he, do you know what happens in the temple? Do you remember this? Yeah, the curtain was torn from where? Top to bottom. It wasn't some priest at the bottom being like, I'm just going to tear this I said, no, no, God's hands was like, I am done with this. And I am going to live inside of you now. You, we, you will be my temple. We are gonna, we're going to make our home. We're going to abide. We're going to live. We're going to do this thing together. That would have blown their minds, friends. A permanent residence of the Spirit of God inside of me? It's too good. And G Jesus, Jesus says, you know what? It's better this way. He said, it's better. Look at this. Two more, two more chapters over. John chapter 16, taking you in this, this passage here. Look at this, 16, 7. Jesus says, but in fact, it is, it's best. It's better. It's to your advantage that I leave. Again, they're like, is it? Because <laughs> I think it's pretty great that you're like right here. And we're hanging out. Like, I love it. He says, it's better. Because if I don't go, the advocate won't come. If I go, then I'm going to send him. I'm going to send him. Why is it better? I think that would have been really confusing. Right? He, he's saying it is, it is better for the Spirit of God to be inside of you than for Jesus to be next to you. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I just wish Jesus would just 
follow me around for the day and be with me and to be like, hey, don't, don't do that. And, and like kind of like full, like tug me, like don't, you don't, don't mess with that. And, and just sit with me. I think they were like, really, it's better that you go away. Here's the deal. When Jesus became when he, when he was fully man and fully God, which is super mysterious, the full, the full humanity meant he was confined to, to space and time. You never see him in the scriptures kicking it at Peter's house with Peter and at the very same time over here kicking it with John. He's in one space at one time. But the Spirit of God, he says it's better. You want to know why? Because the Spirit can be inside of you and inside of you, and inside of you, and inside of you. And we can all have God inside of us at the same time. It's better. This is a better situation. That we can have God's spirit inside of us as close as our breath. As close as our very breath. You know what's really fun about that idea? The Hebrew word for spirit is ruach. I did that. You need that phlegm for that word. You're like, she, ruach. Can we all say that together? Ready? One, two, three. Ruach. Yeah, good job. Flemmy. Ruach means wind, spirit, breath. Inside of us. I want everybody right now, we're just going to take a big inhale on the count of three. One, two, three. And then exhale. Do you guys feel that? That is, that, that energy inside of you, that life, that vitality. The Bible Project taught me all about this. Listen, just as our breath is invisible but full of energy, so is spirit. Invisible but full of energy and life and power and, and vitality to help us live this out. Which I love, I love that Jesus actually shows us this. If you turn to John 20, at the very end, after he has been crucified, buried, resurrected, he's about to go. Look at how he, he, he gives them the Spirit of God. Look at this. John 20, 21. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. He's talking to his friends right here. He says, as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he, he did what? He breathed on them. And he said, receive the Holy Spirit inside of you. Isn't that so good? The Spirit of God right inside of us. This morning, I want to leave us with a practice for the week. Like some Holy Spirit homework. You guys okay with that? With homework with our best friend. If we're going to practice learning how to live life with our best friend, then we really do have to practice. Because I think some of us forget about them all the time. Living inside of us, I think we forget. So one, one of my favorite ways to live life with the Spirit throughout my day, with the emotions and the ebbs and flows of who I'm talking to and my coworkers and all the things that are happening, I, I really try often to stop, take a breath, and turn my attention to the Spirit of God. But I gotta be honest, often I will stop, take out my phone, and turn my attention to a screen. You know what I'm saying? Like, I kinda can't get over what an imposter our phones can be when it comes to the Holy Spirit. And how, how similar they can operate to the Spirit of God. I mean, there's a lot of similarities. We take our phone and we put it inside our pocket and carry it around with us all day long, right? He's a poor substitute. This, this is a poor substitute for the Spirit of God. A study was done in 2021. It's a couple years old that the average American checks their phone 344 times a day. Listen, I do not want you to hear shame when it comes to this. This, that's not what the, this is not about how bad your phone is. This is about how good the Spirit of God is. What if we turned our attention to the Spirit of God 344 times a day? What would happen? 
What adventures would he take you on? What things would he teach to remind you? What things would you laugh about? I mean, I think we could just have so much fun when it comes to the spirit of God. My friend, Pastor Sharon Hottie Miller, she says this, our greatest commodity we have every single day is our attention. I was thinking about that, that idea of to, to pay, that the phrase we pay attention to something. Like we, we literally spend our mental and emotional energy on something. And what would it look like for us to pay our attention to the spirit of God inside of us? But man, I, this is me. My phone feels easier. I can feel it. I just, I wanna just distract. But God's like, turn to me. I have things I wanna talk to you about. If you would turn down that volume, Amy, I got things. I got things to say. What if we turned our attention to the spirit of God as much as we turned our attention to a screen? So here's our practice this week. You take a screenshot, we'll share this, but it's this. Five minutes for five days. What would it look like if you were quiet for five whole minutes? for five days in a row where you just turned down the volume, you put down your phone, you just turned it all down, took out your earbuds and you, you, you said, I'm listening, Spirit. I, I gave us a breath prayer that you could practice in that moment where you inhale just inside your mind and you, you, you address and you say, Holy Spirit, and then you exhale and you say, I am listening. I wonder what he would say to you in that moment. What he wants to remind you of. What he wants to lead and guide and empower you to do. And listen, friends, if you take this challenge on and you don't hear anything right away, you are normal. That's okay. But if we don't practice, how are we going to know? How are we going to know his voice? If we don't turn it all down and just listen and ask and have open, humble hands to hear the Spirit of God. I know He wants to say things to you. The most thing He says most often to me, friends, is I love you. He calls me beloved all the time. And I know that lines up with His Word because you know that moment in Matthew when Jesus is baptized and the Spirit comes down like a dove and the Father's voice, you know what He says? This is my beloved Son. He has things he wants to say to you. He has words for you. He might say, hey, let go of that relationship. He might say, I delight in you. He might say, give away your shoes. He has said that to me before, and it was an adventure. We can have a lot of fun with the Spirit of God. If he says something to you, write it down. Take a minute. Sit with it. Take it to a friend. Does this sound like the Spirit of God to you? Does this line up with his word? Let's, let's practice listening.